Well, um, I'll try and read some narratives of order written upon nature. Uh, in, to use the expression Professor Prakash used this morning. So um, I will try to discuss some new towns and the national development in 20th century Brazil from this perspectives of landscape of powers. Um, Brazilian colonialist aims have targeted its own territory. Auto-imperialism expressed the effort Brazil has done to invade and conquer itself. Set out from this notion in order to examine planning ideas noticed in the appropriation of Brazilian hinterlands in the 20th century. I will explore the shape and relative arrangement of new towns created along this process and correlate three relevant periods of the country's development with the new towns they materialized. Naturally, the three capital cities, Goiânia, Brasilia, and Palmas, um, planned in the 20th century Brazil will be mentioned, but I will mainly address lesser new towns in order to broaden the panorama. I will also uh, explore the idea of progress as transformation of physical environment, which illustrated the nation building discourse. Finally, um, I will make some remarks regarding new towns, uh, the evolving life of the planted urban forms and urban design. Urbanization has been considered a path to modernization leading Brazilian governments, whether democratic or dictatorial, to create and foster the creation of new towns. New capital cities planned in Brazil during the 20th century epitomized the governmental endeavor to occupy the territory, develop the country and build the nation. The notion of civilization that marked the Brazilian empire gave place to the Republican idea of modernization. Under the military re regime, the idea of modernization was replaced by the notion of development. To civilize uh, was another form of empowering the territorial expansion, reaffirming the determination of the colonial conquest land appropriation and submission of the natural. To modernize meant, among other things, to occupy and reorganize the territory, connect its parts, provide it with equipment. To colonize, civilize, modernize meant to plant towns. And not rarely, towns anticipated and drove the rural settlement in the hinterlands of the country. New towns were not only a sign of progress in the Brazilian hinterlands, they were also a sign of hegemony for new towns are uh, intentional calculated acts. Often new towns layouts sprang from one man's imagination and like Le Corbusier, this man believed that he could organize the world on his drawing board. Even so, the background of new town planners unveiled connected histories, which entangled varied upbringings, multiple references, diverse networking, and distinct milieus. As new towns were usually planned elsewhere, more commonly conceived in the core of more developed societies and in metropolitan centers. They respond to urban experiences and problems that belong to specific contexts. Thus, like any process of colonization, new urban forms and contemporary planning ideas promoted the graft of a particular culture onto an alien site. Planners and designers have looked to other places for good practices. 
ideas from elsewhere, selectively, selectively perceived and locally reimagined, have enabled the framing of solutions to pressing local problems. In the context of an ever more interconnected global community, planning models and urban forms have traveled from one situation to another situation, from one period to another. And the macro structures in which ideas travel and the global influence that propels that, that universal journey act more or less equally. At the same time, cultural sensibilities may distinguish its result as ideas are reimagined locally. However, that's not always the outcome. In this movement, planning ideas and more specifically imagined urban forms have experienced acceptance, rejection, adaptation, and transformation as a result of their new position in a new time and place. President Farga's administration pursued the creation of a new society as part of an urban industrialized modern country, promoting a shift from the agro-export economy to an urban industrial one. The aesthetic component was fundamental to the new national identity as evidence of both real and intended transformations and modernist architecture became one of its emblematic symbols. Regarding town planning, the creation of Goiânia, the new capital of Goiás state, epitomized the policy of the authoritarian nationalistic government that praised past territorial occupation to further the development of the hinterlands. Goiânia was presented as the result of capitalist expansion in a new era of, for the national economy. Its final layout ended up mirroring the scheme of Redburn. While the seminar of my colleague, uh, Ricardo Trevisan might present more detail on this plan, I cite the um, case of Goiânia because the creation of this new capital city implemented neighborhood units cul-de-sac and pedestrians path in an alien garden city environment. However, its neighborhood units were rejected and transformed. Um, as we can see on this uh, photo, uh, these uh, portions, these uh, super blocks down here have uh, various uh, streets that were opened um, much later after the um, creation of this new town. These roads were not um, des designed originally. And the fact uh, of Goiânia's neighborhood units was not different from similar layouts as they did not conform to traditional Brazilian urban house and way of life. What happened in these areas um, is that the main facade of the houses, uh, which were turned to the park, to the inner park, uh, were kind of abandoned. And the park is now totally abandoned. And the main facade is now turned to secondary roads. So this is reflects of the way um, the, um, Brazilian house is um, configured. During the Vargas administration, policies were implemented to stimulate the march to the West in order to occupy the hinterlands and develop the Western frontiers of the country. The creation of planned new towns in agricultural frontiers worked as agents of modernity. As Adrian Gorelick observed, the new town was an instrument for establishing a modern society. Modernity was a path to development instead of its consequence. And following these policies, 
the private colonization of Northern Paraná State in South Brazil, where I'm speaking from right now, um, purposely created new towns in recently deforested lands. A private company was responsible for coordinating the work of building a railway line and planning town and country areas, parceling and selling small forested agricultural plots, creating towns and building the necessary infrastructure for rural and urban settlements. These new town plans adapted Ebenezer Howard's social uh, cities scheme. The urban forms were thus equivalent in size, services, and infrastructure. They were interconnected by a railway line, yet separated by green belts, and they were regularly spaced, as you can see on this image, where the first three new towns are spot. Generally speaking, in the layout of 20th century Brazilian new towns, the traditional urban grid was applied for practical reasons as a convenient instrument for real estate speculation and commodification of the territory. As a matter of fact, the grid has been the main urban design model for Brazilian towns since colonial times. The colonization scheme of Northern Paraná State even applied straight line for connecting streams and ridges. There and elsewhere, this scheme easily defined more or less rectangular rural plots, which has direct access to both water and transportation as road uh, was always built along the ridges. Actually, geometry shaped the landscape. Um, the pomp and grandiosity of the grand manor urbanism built up in both French Bazaar designs and the North American City Beautiful movement are not to be expected in the townscape of an agricultural frontier in colonization zones. Yet, planners in Northern Paraná adapted and adopted certain artistic features related to the Grand Manor urbanism. In its essence, this town planning was highly architectonic. It meant to do for the city what an architect does for a building. However, these um, layouts were designed by civil engineers, most of them. In short, it was the art of architecture applied to the construction of a new town. The layout of northern Paraná towns reproduced traditional urban patterns and historical models. Over time, these urban tissues suffered little or no transformation due to broader acceptance. Um, the towns of Jussara and Cidade Gaúcha are sound examples. The symmetrical arrangement of plots, squares, and public buildings, and the converging avenues on the gridded layout depict artistic aspirations. The traditional grid urban tissue was reaffirmed and enriched. The trivium became a fundamental artifice for achieving a scenic artistic urban image. Tree-lined streets and the grouping of public buildings around open spaces attempted to shape remarkable urban views. Um, the layout of Tamboara, another new town in this region, reveals the intention of creating um, a civic center based on the grouping of public buildings and open spaces in the geometrical center of the urban form. We can notice here uh, the central square and beside it, the Catholic church and uh, on the other side, the town hall, the plot for the uh, town hall. These layouts are the result of the urban art notion applied to a conventional urban tissue. As a result, the creative use of the grid 
in the layout of northern Paraná new towns reduced the effect of standardized uniform urban tissues. In general, the grid is criticized for its indifference to the natural setting, for being the perfect plan for the capitalist city, for generating urban forms strong in private spaces but weak in public ones. It is true that the planned grid lacks interest and becomes rigid if mechanically applied. But in these examples, the grid was an initial template upon which designers had the chance to customize the urban form by adjusting it to the topographical conditions and operating artistically. It thus gained individuality, hierarchy, and aesthetic appeal. Occasionally, new towns were shaped as a diagram. The clear cut shape of the urban form is the opposite of the lesser fair. It expresses not only control and order, but also an imprint of progress in the northern Paraná landscape. These grid urban forms were treated as defined holes, uh, regardless of their shape and perimeter. Their geometric centers were usually emphasized by the arrangement of public buildings and open space according to classical formal motifs. Focal points broke the uniformity. Natural features and artistic compositional norms helped um, customize the grid and make it unique. So imaginative organization of urban elements came into play. Sensitive design thus mitigated the shortcomings of the urban grid model. Maringa, the city where I am in right now, um, and Sia Norte bear the same intentions. They were developed upon formal garden city principles and thus a predefined shape was avoided. Although a grid was employed, it conveyed an outgrowth of the circumstances of the site and winding streets follow the topographic conditions. Rarely has a new town been entirely designed upon organic lines. Garden city designs proved to be costlier than an orthogonal street pattern. While upper and middle class garden suburbs spread from the most important Brasilia urban areas in the early 20th century, improvements to city centers were designed according to Beaux-Arts and city beautiful ideas. In the design of new towns, garden city features, when applied, were usually associated with formal urban arrangements, as we can see here uh, on this image of the Maringa Civic Center. That's because a bucolic, cozy, meandering layout would not appear urban, not even planned or modern, if pioneering agricultural settings, in pioneering, pioneering agricultural settings. So uh, Maringa and Cianorti present what was called a hybrid urbanism. All in all, those two city layouts resemble what Raymond Unwin termed a, con a conscious artistic designing of irregularities. These layouts designed by civil engineers show the planning ideas taught in Brazilian polytechnic schools. The historical models which formed the academicist polytechnic urbanism were progressively replaced by the, the rationalistic urbanism mostly implemented by architects in the second half of last century. New towns created in the 1950s anticipated the hegemonic presence of radical and familiar urban forms, less related to tradition and more interested in the universal ambience of the functional city. From its very beginning, Siam urbanistic discourse excluded Garden City, Beaux Arts, and any kind of explicit formalism unsuited for modern needs. 
officially, CM tried to distinguish itself from traditional town planning and advocated uh, for modern planning uh, as the um, antithesis to everything that existed previously. Um, moving a bit in space and time, the agricultural frontier pioneered towards, towards central Brazil will find the town of Angelica, built in 1954, uh, which is a small town aimed at private colonization enterprise whose layout was prepared in Sao Paulo upon rationalist lines. Noticeably, the scheme designed urban life and urban form according to an alien metropolitan model. Angelica tried to artificially set up modernity in a remote, undeveloped agricultural setting. Its design classified, separated, ordered, and standardized the element of the urban form according to the machine aid rationale. Adopting the sectorization of the Athens Charter, the city ended up segregated by functions. This design method defined the minimal elements of each urban function in order to find the simplest design solution, which will be applied even in the most complex cases. Alongside the burden of functionality of zoning, pedestrians and automobiles also moved separately. Uh, its, residential, its residential sector was organized in super blocks and neighborhood units, proposing an unconventional configuration for the neighborhood. Dwellers have not complied with this alien configuration, which has been totally transformed. Truly, um, the neighborhood unit failed in Angelica and elsewhere, in part because the planned facilities in its inner common space were never fully implemented. Uh, and as we can notice here and here, these were supposed to be the common green open areas uh, of the neighborhood units, and they were uh, parceled and they, uh, they are now occupied by private uh, buildings and they were crossed by uh, streets as the normal urban tissue. And uh, 